Are you thinking about moving to the Oregon coast? Well, you might be in for a big surprise. In this video, we're going to talk about why it's so hard to find a home at the Oregon coast, and all that starts now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from the Oregon coast. And in this video, we're going to talk about just why it's so hard to find a home at the Oregon coast. We've helped so many people relocate to the Oregon coast and I think a lot of people do end up being a little bit surprised as to how long it can take to find the perfect home. Now, Part of what we'll talk about in this video is keeping your options open. That's going to be one of the best strategies for being able to find a place relatively quickly. So in this video, again, we're going to talk about the reasons why some of the obstacles or things that can make the process of finding a home at the Oregon coast a little bit of an uphill battle sometimes. Now, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And again, we've helped so many people relocate to the Oregon coast and as real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Oregon coast. All right, the first thing that we're going to talk about is there just aren't that many towns on the Oregon coast. So there are 32 towns and villages smattered throughout the Oregon coast, which has 363 miles of coastline. There's going to be about a half a dozen towns that are relatively larger. Um, so 7,500 to 10,000 people. And then of course, Coos Bay and North Bend have about 25,000 people. Uh, aside from that, there's gonna be several towns with 1,500 people, 2,500 people, even less than 1,000 people. So you have these kind of larger towns um, that can offer maybe a little bit more in the way of uh, some of the amenities that you might be looking for. A lot of people don't wanna live in a totally rural feeling area or a very small town. Some people do though, of course. Um, but either way, there's going to definitely be options for that. And then again, there's going to be some of these smaller towns that, again, for some people are gonna check the boxes. For others, they want an area that's a little more bustling. And there's going to be some pretty good variety when you look at the towns on the Oregon coast as a whole, as far as what's offered. Uh, there's going to be towns that are a little more touristy. There's going to be towns that are a little more rural feeling. There's going to be your classic beach towns. There's going to be towns that are really catered to the second home and vacation home market. There's gonna to be towns that have a little more of an upscale feel, and then there's gonna be towns that offer a little bit, uh, kind of a wider spectrum in terms of what you can get. Uh, now, if you start narrowing it down too much and you're only looking for a town that meets one of the, you know those uh, categories or kind of falls into one of those categories, right out of the gate, that's going to be limiting in your home search. So keeping an open mind in terms of the town where the house is that you may end up buying um, gives you a better opportunity uh, to see more potential options quicker. And I think bottom line and something that we've really seen as a consistent theme with all of the people that we've worked with is the town that you end up moving to is probably going to lack some sort of amenity that you would be looking for, but offer enough, you know, to where it, it's a place that you can see yourself living. But not every town on the Oregon coast necessarily has it all. And something we talk to people uh, about a lot is that you might be in a town that's maybe a little bit smaller and it doesn't have a lot to offer in town, but you might be 10, 15, 20 minutes away from a larger town that has the hospital, has some of the big box stores or, you know, the grocery stores, your hardware store. Uh, the vet clinics, you know, all of those things that a lot of people ask about. All right, the next thing that makes it difficult to find a home at the Oregon coast is there just aren't that many homes. So again, these are smaller towns. So inventory is relatively low and has been for the past few years. It has ticked up a little bit with interest rates going up, but there's also just fewer homes overall to choose from. Uh, so there's not a lot for sale, but there's not a lot out there as it is. And we've talked to a ton of people who've looked for a home at the Oregon coast for years and have, you know, had outright given up. Um, and we've been able to help those people and, uh, you know, find them a home and a property and a town that works for them. So 
don't give up hope. It can be a little bit daunting, uh, but there is going to be something out there for you. We just have to go find it. That's what we're here to help with, of course. And just like, you know, different categories of towns, different styles of towns, there's going to be different options for different types of properties. So you have homes that are in town, out of town, homes on little tiny lots, you know, little beach cottages and things like that. You have homes that are on a half an acre or an acre or more. That can be a little bit harder to come by, in fact, probably harder to come by than most people realize. A lot of people we talk to are looking for homes with, you know, just a little bit of land, not acreage, not five, 10 acres, you know, but one, two acre lots. Uh, and again, that can be a little bit harder to come by, but definitely something that we can help you find. And then of course, you know, there's beachfront, oceanfront, there's homes kind of up in the hills, up in the mountains and everything in between. But if you do, sort of pigeonhole yourself into one particular type of property, again, that can put you at a disadvantage because if we're not casting as wide a net as possible, it can make it difficult to find the right property. So maybe keep in mind a couple of different categories, a couple of different types of properties or styles of properties uh, that could check the boxes for you. That will give you, uh, you know, a, a better chance and a better opportunity to find the right one. And you know, the Oregon coast is interesting. You know, there's a lot of similarities up and down the Oregon coast market in a lot of these different towns. There's kind of the cream of the crop. You know, probably has a ocean view, walk to the beach, very well maintained or on the newer side. There are a lot of fixer uppers, something that we'll talk about uh, in this video. And I mean, for a lot of people, they don't necessarily want to get into a home that they have to completely remodel or fix a bunch of issues. And then there's kind of a messy middle in between, but the deals are definitely out there for sure. Um, it's really just a matter of kind of looking at what town might suit you, what type of area uh, could be a good fit, what type of property you would be looking for, and really diving in from there. All right, and the next thing we'll talk about, similar to the last category, is there aren't ocean views everywhere. I mean, a lot of Oregon coast towns aren't necessarily right on the ocean and right on the beach, so a lot of the residential development isn't necessarily you know, right there on the ocean where you have as many opportunities for the ocean view, but, Again, you know, the housing stock is small, inventory is low, so if you are counting on a home that has, you know, big sweeping ocean views, those do come up for sure. They do typically go quickly um, and they're not always available. So a lot of people, especially in some of our first interactions when they reach out to us, you know, they, one of the things that's at the top of their list is they want a home with water views, you know, specifically ocean views or maybe a lake or river, things like that. But a lot of people moving to the Oregon coast, they want to be on the beach. They want that ocean view. And again, it, it can be relatively hard to come by. Another thing too, is it adds a premium to properties for sure. So the same house that's maybe on the east side of the highway could be a hundred thousand dollars cheaper you know, because it doesn't have that ocean view and it doesn't have that beach access. So again, that really does come at a premium. That's something at least you wanna be prepared for going into this process is that if you are looking for a town and a property that's on the ocean and has those ocean views, it could potentially take a little bit longer to find the right one. But if you're patient, it is worth it. All right, the next thing that can really make it difficult we talked about the fixer uppers. The ocean is brutal on homes and we've done videos on home maintenance at the Oregon coast. I'll link to it right here. Um, actually spoke with an inspector who does a lot of home inspections on the Oregon coast. And uh, you, you know, the, the maintenance required to extend the life of the different elements of your home, uh, not just exterior, but also interior, you know, the salty air, the ocean air can do a lot of damage. Now, again, there are steps that you can take in terms of maintenance uh, that will help prevent, uh, you know, these issues from getting past the point of no return, but either way, you know, your siding, your roof, any metal elements around your exterior and also inside of your home, inside of your garage can all take a beating. So what ends up happening is a lot of homes on the Oregon coast for sale typically have some deferred maintenance issues because of the elements, you know, the, the climate, you know, that these properties live in. So I think if that's not something that necessarily scares you, that can increase, you know, your chances and your opportunity for finding the right home. If you're willing to go into a property and maybe make some repairs and replacements and correct some of the issues and continue ongoing maintenance to prevent some of those issues from happening in the future, again, that can really help your chances with finding the right property. But 
we've worked with a lot of people who we find homes, we look at homes that check a lot of boxes, right location, right size, all of that stuff. But a lot of these properties are really going to need some work. And for some people, that's a big enough deterrent to not move forward on a property. So again, if you can keep that mindset, knowing going into that, this, that probably a lot of the homes that we look at are going to have some issues that need to be corrected, that can definitely help your chances. But otherwise, just know that that is something that really does contribute to it being a little more difficult to find a home on the Oregon coast. All right, the next thing that we'll talk about is the competition. Now this is a very unique market, again, all up and down the Oregon coast. There are four primary buyer pools that you would be competing against buying a home at the Oregon coast. You have local residents, people who already live in the area. You have people relocating into the area. You have people buying second homes, vacation homes, maybe third homes, whatever it may be, but people buying vacation homes. And then you also have investors. So you have people who are buying long-term or short term rentals on the Oregon coast. Obviously, tourism, vacationing at the Oregon coast, that's a huge part of the economy there. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of investors that come in and build properties or buy properties to do Airbnb or uh, or just to do long-term rent uh, rentals to cater to the local market. But either way, again, you have these four primary buyer pools that make it a really unique dynamic uh, as far as who you're competing against. And it does elevate the competition a little bit, or it can at least. I think demand isn't totally off the charts and the competition isn't all that different than probably anywhere else that you know that you would see in the country overall. A lot of the general rules of thumb hold true in these Oregon coast markets, just like they would anywhere else. I mean, a good house in a good neighborhood that's in good condition is probably going to attract a lot of competition probably going to get multiple offers, probably going to sell relatively quickly. And then you have everything, you know, down the line from there. So the point being here really is that we'll typically see a healthy amount of inventory. We'll run search criteria based on what you're looking for in the areas that you're looking for, and we'll see some options. But again, the best houses in the best condition, in the best areas, with the best views, with the best floor plans, you know, all of these desirable attributes that people would be looking for typically sell relatively quickly because you have these four primary buyer pools all competing for the best of the best. So it's not that there's not options out there, but the best options typically do go pretty quickly. So we can prepare for that. We can be ready. We can put ourselves in a position for when that home comes on the market, we can jump on it and have a strategy to win an offer. Depending on how quickly somebody might want to move or jump on something, a lot of what you see that looks desirable that comes up can go off the market just as quick as it came on. So something to know for sure, it's, it's a unique market as far as the demand and the buyers that are out there. All right, and finally on this list for reasons why it's so hard to find a home on the Oregon coast is a lot of people just haven't met the right real estate team yet. And that's what we're here for. So our process looks like this. If, if you've been watching this, these videos, if you're thinking about relocating, moving to the Oregon coast or buying a second home or vacation home or an investment property, whatever it may be, we would typically start with an introduction, do a video call if possible, where we can get face to face, at least digitally, and talk about your story, what the goals are, what your timeline is, what the you know what your budget is, what you're looking for in a property, the needs, the wants, the must haves, where you can make exceptions, etc., and then put together a game plan to really start exploring what the best options will be. A lot of people have already started looking on sites like Zillow and things like that, researching different towns. But often when we have those conversations initially with a lot of people, we're able to talk about options that other people haven't necessarily considered yet or heard of. and expand the opportunities a little bit so again we can cast as wide of a net as possible to try to make sure that anything that comes on the market that looks viable we can jump on it if and when the time comes and beyond that too once we have an idea and a clear picture of what we're looking for 
we can really have a strategy and a game plan to both educate you more on the areas, the neighborhoods, etc what type of property is really going to check all of the boxes. And then for most people that we're working with that are coming in from out of state, it's not viable to visit every time that there's a property that hits the market that looks interesting. So typically what we'll do is we will schedule tours on your behalf. We'll go walk through properties, get some eyes on it, take videos, take photos, do a FaceTime or video call, walk through the property. And that doesn't necessarily replace you actually being there and touring the home, but we can get about 80% there, I think. And our philosophy is always going to be, you know, we'll, we're more likely to talk you out of a property than to try to convince you that the property that we're walking through is the right one for you. And if something all checks out, if something looks really good, and after we've gone and seen it, it looks like a good option. You can schedule a time to visit there, or we can write up an offer, get an offer accepted, and then you can come visit for the inspection. Uh, or a lot of people just buy sight unseen, go through the process, and then once we close, they move right in. So either way, again, having the right strategy and game plan from start to finish, both looking at what the best options are for you, talking about where and what to prioritize, and then starting to go through those, those steps of the game plan, touring properties, doing our due diligence, you know, looking into the history of a property, looking into if there's any red flags or potential issues, continuing to tour properties until we find the right one, and then going through the offer process, getting an offer accepted, going through the contract period, and then closing on your home. We try to make it really easy for people. And, and we're here to be the eyes and ears and kind of boots on the ground for this whole process. Again, especially for those folks that aren't local, that aren't in state. So finding the right home on the Oregon coast is not impossible, not nearly impossible. But again, there are some challenges. There are these uphill battles. There's you know these different things that we're up against there's just not that many towns, right? And these are relatively small towns, so the housing stock is pretty small. Inventory is relatively low. There's just not that much for sale. And the homes that are really great, perfect, check a lot of boxes for a lot of people that do get listed typically sell pretty quickly. There's a lot of deferred maintenance. You know, There's a lot of fixer-uppers. There's a lot of properties that need some work and not everybody is willing to or wants to get into a property where they have to do a bunch of work. I don't blame them. But either way, the Oregon coast, the conditions there uh, can be really rough on homes. So this is something both that you might inherit purchasing a home, but also something to know that when you do buy a house at the Oregon coast, you do want to invest in these ongoing maintenance items to make sure that you're extending the life of the home as much as possible. There's definitely some great options, right? There's definitely a healthy variety as far as what you can find at the Oregon coast, but not everywhere is gonna be right on the ocean and have a big sweeping ocean view. So if that is a must have, we can stick it out and wait for sure. But if you're willing to make some exceptions there, that's gonna give you better chances for finding the right home. It's a really unique market with local residents, relocators, investors, people buying vacation homes, all competing for the best properties that hit the market. So that's something that we have to navigate and can be up against at times. And again, just working with the right real estate team and agents that are going to guide this process and get the job done for you is also something that is going to increase your chances of finding the right one. But just some things to know, some things that we typically talk to people about right out of the gate, just so the expectations are set, you know what you're getting into. Again, this is a unique market with unique dynamics and some things that we are up against uh, from time to time potentially. So if this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button, that helps us out a lot. And if you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And again, we've helped so many people relocate to the Oregon coast, move to the Oregon coast. As real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So. If that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, click the link down below in the description of the click the link down below in the description of the video. We can schedule that introductory call and start talking about these things more in depth. We really appreciate you watching as always. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.